Amy Jones. I'm one of the editors with the mixed media team for Northlight Books. I've been in the photo studio all week with artist Nicole Ray. We've been photographing the step-by-step -step instructions for her art journaling book art books. Um, so, Nicole, great to be with you this week. Yes, it's been wonderful being here. It has been. Um, I see you've got your computer out, but I know we've been working on art journaling all week. So how is it that, how does your computer fit in with your art journaling? My computer is my main tool for my journaling. Mm -hmm. I find that I'm almost always with my computer and I enjoy using a Word document, just a blank Word document, to uh, begin my journaling. I usually have some music on and I use the Word document to make a list journal. Okay. I find that I'm an expert at to-do lists and using a Word document and the keyboard and typing, I find that I can often get a rhythm going with my journaling and um, use this document to collect my thoughts I can save it on my desktop and I can often come back to it um, at a different time of day. Mm -hmm. It also serves this list format. It takes the pressure away from writing paragraphs or full sentences and that can be sort of daunting for some people. It also looks nice um, as a layout or design element too. I find just like a lot of us that uh, journaling can be often difficult to start and even, even for me right now I often um, stray away from that so I have found that working in a list format over a more left to right writing format allows me to put my, th my thoughts out on paper but take away some of that pressure of feeling like maybe I'm writing a book or mm -hmm. writing um, my life story. These lists hold my thoughts, they, they carry the words I'm thinking but it just takes off some of that pressure. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed <clears throat> this list format, it makes it really easy to call attention to certain words. And you've sort of done that in these mini projects. Can you tell me about these and what their purpose is? I enjoy working on mini projects while I'm in the journaling process and getting ready to prepare for a larger project. These uh, mini projects often focus on positive affirmations, mm -hmm. uh, choosing words that I can carry with me um, throughout my days, um, words like journey, take a deep breath, trust the process, those words um, over time have become very meaningful to me and I find that when I create many projects with those words that I'm setting out a, an intention and uh, giving uh, power to those words. Mm -hmm. What I like about these, these are actually playing cards that have those positive affirmations on them. So in a card deck, there are, what, 52 cards? Yes. And you can literally carry these with you for positive affirmations for yourself. Yes. Or I've noticed what you've been doing this week is giving them to people yes, as I, you encounter them. I enjoy working on a small space, and a deck of cards is something that's very inexpensive. You can mm -hmm. get it pretty much anywhere, or you may have one lying right. around at your home. And um, I found that I can create anywhere from one to three or four of them in the morning while I'm just enjoying a cup of coffee. And then from there, I can put them in my studio. I can bring one to the office, carry them with me. And again, I do enjoy giving them mm -hmm. to um, other people as well. Nice. And now this is um, a book where you've done some found journaling. We Show us a few pages and what you've sort of done in here. I found this book um, at a used bookstore and it had just been sitting in my studio for quite a while and I really just enjoyed the images and um, the size of the book and so I decided that um, I would do a little bit more journaling and creating. I've used a black pen to box in certain words that call to me. I began to find my story in this book and um, I found it to be um, very enjoyable boxing in words that I could relate to without having to do too much journaling. Mm -hmm. um, but then you've also got this option and this is a book about birds which 
is one of the themes for your um, book arts, but you can cover up those pages with the birds that don't really fit well with your story, with your actual journaling. Yes, there's often sometimes you find a book that maybe you don't really, the image on there you just don't really like, and so I found that um, I can often take other journals that I print out for larger projects and use them in smaller projects, still then allowing me to personalize this altered book mm -hmm. with some of my own thoughts that I carry. And being able to print these out is another great reason why journaling on your computer yes. works really well. Yes, I'm able to print multiple copies and then from there I can use them as a full page in an altered book or I can cut apart and use some of those words individually and use them on the mini cards or in the little mini word books. All right. All right, so when we come back, we are going to talk more about the themes that Nicole Ray uses in her book arts. Okay, so I'm back with Nicole Ray. We have um, piles of journal pages. I see your computer is closed, and now we've got these printed off pages, and they seem to be arranged in a particular way. So what have you, what have you done here? Once I print my journal pages, I usually have anywhere from 50 to 100 individual sheets of paper. And I have enjoyed, um, as my process has grown over the years, to take some time and reflect with my text. So I'll take the large pile and begin to read through the journaling. And I start to find some common themes sometimes in the journaling. Sometimes I feel like the text is focusing on a beginning. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm starting. And so I'll often take that text and I'll put it in one pile. So for example, usually I will start with a beginning pile here. As I continue to read through, I'll find that a lot of my text just doesn't really have a place and that begins to become the middle of of the book or the middle pile. And then as I write the document, um, I usually find that I'm coming towards kind of the end of of that book or the end of, of a process I'm going through and that becomes this pile here. So the three piles symbolize the beginning, the middle, and the end of what will become the large book project. Okay, and we've got some examples of these book projects here. I know you've got five or six of these and you're working on yes. another um, and you've told me that each of these sort of a theme emerges from these books and it from these journals and it becomes a story that you tell in here. What are some of the themes that you've noticed appear frequently? Over the last 10 years of my kind of art journaling, book arts journey, I've explored uh, different traveling that I've mm -hmm. done, taking trips, and then over the last five years I started a collection about my personal journey. Mm -hmm. I have started to document my life and these books hold exactly where I've lived, my feelings, my thoughts, the people I've met, mm -hmm. my experiences, and things that I've collected along the way, whether that's photographs, different used books, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there are, you connect those personal experiences to more abstract themes like birds, flight, um, navigation, the ocean. I see lots of that in some of these pages. Um, how do those speak to your personal journey or your life experiences? I have found that when I'm creating these books, it's I've spent a lot of time already with my text. And at that point, to kind of draw attention away from my journaling, I like to explore different abstract elements. For example, I've spent a lot of time by the ocean and I will mm -hmm. often go to bookstores and find books that talk about the ocean or sailing or navigation. They just as I, as I begin to start one of these books, I often take a look at what's around me mm -hmm. and pulling information from my space and my environment begins to have the book take shape in a way that it's even less about my process and more about an entire experience. Mm -hmm. So if we look at some of these journal pages, We'll start at the beginning here. This one, for instance, very clearly speaks about traveling and a journey and going from one place to another. It's got that navigation element here. And we connect the California to this map. Um, and I know you're from North Dakota. Yes. And so you've got this North Dakota highlighted. 
um, and we can, and you've got your path is being started, and that really clearly matches up with what you've got going on here. Um, what are some of the themes that you pull out of this spread? I've had the opportunity to uh, travel a lot and live in a few different places, and so this book here is capturing some time spent along the coast in California, mm -hmm. and um, from there uh, taking a journey back home. So in this spread here, uh, this is a very um, dear spot for me here, um, this picture of the ocean and this lookout point, and uh, this just is a kind of a focus on home, where, mm -hmm. where my heart is. And uh, on this spread over here, I, I have a collection of feathers. I photograph feathers, I pick them up, I carry them with me. And it's, for me, just this symbol that I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. And that just seems to be a good starting spread for this book. Yeah, and, that, and you've pulled this page from a book that you found at, what, a used bookstore, yes. or an antique store, that talks about maps and compasses. Um, and it's got these little phrases, draw an imaginary map, or no fear or uncertainty. That's, um, you know, you can connect those pages, those theme pages that you found in your materials yes. to your pictures, your personal pictures and your personal journals. And that creates a really um, amazing story, I think. Yeah. yeah. So when we come back, we will talk more about some of these materials, these found objects that um, Nicole uses in her book projects. So we've talked about how you create a theme and a story for your journal pages, but now we're going to get into creating the actual books and what sort of supplies you use for these sorts of things. So I noticed we've got our typical supplies, stamps, pastels, tape, pens, um, but we've also got some of these other found items here. Can you tell me what sort of things you use in your books, where you find them? Well, one of the most exciting parts about what I do with art journaling and book arts is collecting supplies. So I take some time to, again, take some of those themes that I have and then I go on some wild adventures to yeah. some thrift stores, used bookstores, and I'm looking for, for books that often uh, resemble what I'm wanting to focus in the main project I'm working mm -hmm. on. So I'll find older books that will have illustrations of birds that I can use, whether I'd like to cut them out or use the full page in the book. Um, I've found different books on music. In the project I've been currently working on, music has been very meaningful and symbolic in my life, and I was able to find this very, very old uh, music music book that I've been able to take the pages from and, and use in the main project I'm working on. And you're pretty deliberate about what sort of page you take. You don't just grab a random page from your music book and use it because it's got these, you know, the nice stanzas, but you focus on the words too. And you cover up the words that you don't want and you circle the words that you do want. In all, in any, any supply that I use in my book, I always Ha there's always an intention to it. Mm -hmm. I'm always wanting either the words to call to myself to convey a feeling or something that when a reader picks up one of my books that it will speak to them. So there's mm -hmm. always an intention with every text um, or image or, or our supply that I use on a page that I'm working mm -hmm. on. You use photographs a lot too. Yes. Photography has been a passion of mine. I see my days in photographs, mm -hmm. and so I do uh, pretty much photograph absolutely everything I find, yeah. whether it's my feet, feathers, the ocean, uh, a sunset, a sunrise, and I will then collect those, print them, usually four by six in size, okay. and use those in my work. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, the one thing that we haven't talked about is we looked through some of the pages of this, but what kind of book do you use for your when you create a book? When I start a, a 
large book project like this, I will often go to either a used bookstore or a bookstore, and I'm looking for a certain size similar to this, something that has enough space for me to create on. Mm -hmm. And so this is an actual book that has been written, and then from there I will uh, prepare the book to then be able to work in it with okay. my own supplies. You, um, I know you just sew the cover and then on a page like this, you've glued several pages together. Yes, so when preparing a book, I will I will uh, gesso the cover, basically prime the cover to uh, have a blank canvas to work on. And then from there, I will go through the book. I often remove some of the pages to thin out the book, knowing that I'm gonna be adding additional papers mm -hmm. and things to it. Then from there, to create a uh, stronger work surface, I will glue pages together, often two or three, and um, that just creates a, a sturdier canvas for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I kind of like this um, crinkled effect. It's not perfect, and it gives some texture or dimension to the spreads that you work on. That is one of my personal styles, this yeah. crinkleness. I find that it just really takes the pressure off of having a perfect surface and it just sets the the uh, blank canvas already. And um, it's just a simple technique of using white glue and a paintbrush and uh, applying it and then from there as it dries it creates this crinkle effect. Yeah. So that's very intentional for me. Now, why do you choose to work in a book that is an actual book with text or images on it? Is there a reason for that? Um, there's a couple. You could find a book uh, that you really enjoy and use some of those pages in that book mm -hmm. as a starting point so you don't always have to go and cover up the text that's on that page. And I just yeah. find that there's a lot more options with using um, a hardback book from a bookstore over possibly just a blank journal. These types of books often have a, a bigger binding that allows me to, to work in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and from there, I get to create my story in a book that's already been bound. Yeah. Well, and I would imagine that um, if journaling is something new for somebody, having that page that already has text on it sort of takes away the fear of the blank page. Yes, too. it really does take away a lot of anxiety. Um, when I'm starting to work on a page um, here, I do look for books that have maybe more white space around, but here I'm actually going to focus on covering up some of these elements. So it gives me a starting point, it gives me a task where I'm going to yeah. be able to start using what is here and my supplies and covering that up. So I already have uh, a task to do. Okay. Yeah, that's a great starting point, a nice way to start figuring out your layout. So are there any other supplies that we haven't mentioned that you really like to use? I really enjoy collecting um, different postcards. You can collect these on your travels, you can collect these in little uh, shops, or even you'll find vintage, uh, vintage postcards which are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Postcards allow you to be able to use both possibly the front or the back side um, of the card. I really enjoy uh, paint samples. Yeah, I see there's as, a uh, bunch of them here. As unique as it is, it they're already pre-cut. I often mm -hmm. really enjoy some of the names of the paints yeah. that um, are on there, and I can use those in intentional items. One of my mm -hmm. favorite is called Golden Coast, oh, and it's one of my favorite good. yellow colors, and uh, it just creates that color element mm -hmm. on the page. Yeah, and it's great to be able to pair those up with your photographs. Yes. Those paint samples, um, you don't have to worry about blending colors like you would with actual paint. Right. Uh, one of my also favorite uh, supplies is oil pastels. I, I don't usually work with a lot of paint, something just due to not having the patience yeah. <laughs> in drying. So oil pastels allow me to add color. And then from there, I can also use a smudging technique to then go back into some of my journals or some of those found book pages and highlight words. Right. And oil pastels allow uh, that to happen. Well, speaking of techniques, um, let's go ahead and see you uh, create one of your spreads. So when Wonderful. we come back, we'll watch Nicole in action. Uh, 
Okay, so we are back with Nicole Ray, um, and now we are working in, or she is working in her book. We've got the right side of the spread already created. Um, there's some nice layering going on with old vintage papers and some sheet music. Um, go ahead and you can tell them what you're doing, how you've got your paper arranged, why you're choosing the things on this side. So in this spread, um, I have chosen to take this list that I have created and I'm going to keep it here on my left hand side because I've picked out a couple other papers that I'm going to use to then begin layering over on this side of the spread. So I'm just kind of gluing this down as we go here. Um, in each spread that I do, I find my inspiration from the text um, or my journal here and that's usually again right next to me in a nice pile that I've already organized like we have here and then from there I go to a large uh, box of photos something similar to this here and I'll find a picture that I want to use um, that's this feather one I've chosen and usually it's just a photo that calls to me calls mm -hmm. to the text something that I feel like I can um, make a connection with and then once I begin to once I pull that photo from there all the colors that I use in the spread are being pulled from that photo okay. so since I've started the right side already and um, this photo has a lot of nice golden yellows and teals mm -hmm. turquoises so that's where I've added in this paint sample here and I'll again bring that those colors over with some additional extra elements uh, that I'll add in as we go here. Yeah, I can see from looking at this right side of the page, the music is very deliberate. It's called Sunrise, which clearly matches the photo, and you've got in the um, music words, the lyrics, there's grows, with, grows bright with gold, which is clearly emphasized in that photograph. And all, and once I find a photograph, then that's where I can use some of those vintage books that I've collected mm -hmm. and try to find an element that then connects to that. So that's why I went ahead and, and I happened to find, it's exciting when I find mm -hmm. something as deliberate or intentional as the word sunrise and some wonderful um, words to go with that image. Then from there as we continue to create, I'll go back and I'll highlight some of these words to emphasize. Mm -hmm. So that's how a spread forms. It starts with my journal text and then from there I literally go to a box of photos and find a photo that just resonates with that text or that feeling mm -hmm. I have. And from there, the colors get pulled. And depending on what's happening in that photo, that's where having a nice kind of random collection of books that yeah. you find at thrift stores, bookstores, um, you can then use to look in and start finding elements that will then connect to that mm -hmm. photo. Okay, so you've got your photo there, but I see it's, you're not leaving it just a normal on a piece of photo paper. So with working in a book, um, like we had discussed, I often have to remove the pages mm -hmm. just to make the book a little smaller because eventually the book expands as I add in layers of paper, as yeah. you can see here. And so to kind of help thin out the book a little bit, I try to take any additional papers that I'm gonna use and peel off if there's a back layer to that um, that piece of paper and usually photos or paint samples have this kind of second layer and sometimes it comes off really nicely and then sometimes it kind of comes off well as you see here Pieces. and um, that's okay it's just trying to um, create a thinner material I also find that once we do that um, when you rub your hand along it it, it creates an edge that adheres even smoother to the page then again creating that one kind of flush flush page it really yeah. merges things in right we talked about um, earlier how you like the crinkling of adding these pages together yes. and having that thinner photograph allows the photo to mimic that yes and so as you put crinkling. the glue on it's as simple as just a white glue and I'm just using a paintbrush and painting it on like I would paint paint and just kind of going around the edges. When I'm working in my books, of course, I try to get those corners down, but it's never my main concern to have the whole piece of paper glued down. Eventually, it will uh, it'll adhere and, and it'll be all right. 
Right, so. because you do have your masking tape. Yes. That serves a nice dual purpose. It's functional, keeps those, some of those edges down that might not stay with the glue. But it also, you do a nice where you rip it in half long ways and you've got that edge to take away from what these really sharp edges of the book. Yes, masking tape has been a wonderful little tool um, in my collection of supplies. I'll show you how we do that here in a moment. Here I'm just taking a uh, half a sheet of paper from a book about compasses and um, it just kind of talks about how you start off and getting kind of orientated and being with what we're kind of focusing on the text in this spread I found that this this piece would go nice uh, mm -hmm. to, to add an additional element in there and again it's all just a layering technique um, and gluing those things down from there I can go in like Amy was saying and I can add in some masking tape just your good old masking tape and sometimes I use it in a full piece mm -hmm. like this, let's say I've stamped out some words and I've made a mistake, I can often take this masking yeah. tape and cover that um, text and then just stamp right on top of the masking tape. This technique I just found, I, I love ripping, I love ripping yeah. paper, I love, um, I just love that and I found that I could do the same technique here with some masking tape and then I can again use that as a dual purpose, I can kind of seal down that edge but then also add just another little fun decorative element in here. Yeah, that fun, nice ripped edge sort of matches with what you've done with your journal page. Yes. You sort of tore down this large sheet of paper into something smaller that fits there, and that masking tape pairs nicely with that. And then, you know, even like little scraps like this, if I'm looking at a page, then I might go, okay, maybe I'll add that right up in here. And it's just, sometimes mm -hmm. those decisions are just as basic as that. Yes. I just have it in my hand, and I see, okay, that page needs a little something there. Um, as we continue to build the layers and we get more of our larger um, pieces of paper on in our photos, I'll go in and here's kind of the fun part where you get to add little bits, I yeah. call them, um, whether it's tags or buttons or cut out little illustrations from those used books or old books that we have found. And so then I'll again kind of take and look at my page here and I see that there's this kind of open space here mm -hmm. I want to just, I just need something, yeah. so I can simply then, I'll glue that and attach that, and there we're adding a little bit more information, adding mm -hmm. some more color, and just, again, right. having fun with the page. That paper clip works well, too. You've already got something stuck in there, but I noticed just from working with you all week long, yeah. you know, sometimes we'll put a paper clip on a tag and not have something in there yet, and if you go back to the page later... you can And you can clip it on. So often, sometimes... Um, if I wanted to, I could have applied a, I could have clipped on a paper clip here right on this photograph. And paper clips, just a little bit that I discovered yeah. along the way that becomes very functional and just kind of fun to use. Um, if one is clipped right here, that's where, similar to what I'm going to do here, I can just go ahead and take and slide that underneath there mm -hmm. and then add in an additional element. So it becomes a decorative piece, but it also is a functional piece as mm -hmm. I begin as I continue to create the spread there. So as we continue to build the page, uh, eventually it gets starts to get a little bit more crowded in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, then I begin to just start adding in some little kind of additional elements to add some movement to the page. A nice bird that matches the bird on the other page. Does yeah, it exactly so we've got, the, we've got the feather in here, we've got the flying bird, got this um, picture of the ocean here. So again, I try to create almost like little landscapes or sceneries on the page as well, mm -hmm. pulling from the pictures that we have or the text. And again, you can easily be working on a page that doesn't have an exact theme, but you could just pull things that you know you enjoy. So maybe you mm -hmm. have some books on flowers. You could cut out flowers and add them there. Um, yeah. I often... Um, follow kind of a, th a theme with my books, but there's a lot of movement and flexibility to just, again, enjoy collaging and adding things. Yeah. Well, like, I'm reading this, um, your journal on that far left, and it doesn't specifically say birds or feathers the way some of your others do, but you've got, a, you've got the word path and the word journey, which are all things that do relate to birds and the way yes. they 
work and migrate. Yes, and that's again where some of those abstract books that I find are themes. It's just fun. You just kind of start creating a little story within mm -hmm. within the page, um, and then again builds an entire story within within a book. Uh, buttons. They are in a lot of my work. Yeah. And I uh, just find that it's just a fun way to add color. I had a collection of them. I didn't really know what to do with them. And now they've become one of my main supplies in my books. And uh, people donate their buttons to me. Do and, they? <laughs> and I get to use them in there. So I often will pull, again, same similar colors just to kind of create an overall theme. and. I often like working with some of just the basic design elements of lines and color, and so those well, are kind yeah, of in there. Well, yeah, you can be really deliberate with these button choices, you know, pairing the two colors that flow throughout the theme of the, of the spread. And so once we've kind of added in some of our elements um, with the layering and the little accents of the buttons, paper clips, here's where I want to draw some focus to the words that are on the page, the message that I want to to have speak. And so I usually do that either through um, a fine tip pen or mm -hmm. I'll use oil pastels and then I've got my stamp set here. So a lot of times I will box in uh, words that kind of speak to me. So, you know, own your journey. And if I want to bring emphasis to that, I'd literally just kind of create a box right around it not worrying about straight lines, just wanting to bring attention to that. Mm -hmm. um, then I can come and use one of my favorite all-time supplies is oil pastels and I can go and I can add a little color and with just a simple smudging I can blend that in and now I've brought a col um, an element of color in here right. as well as brought attention to those words that really mm -hmm. speak to me on that page. And like you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> you are using a pastel so you don't have to wait for it to dry. Right. You can keep going. And I love that because i that's one of the uh, main joys that I enjoy working in a book is that I can create this spread and I can easily flip the page and have another blank canvas to mm -hmm. work on. And then from there, I can go back and I can add things to this. Yeah. After I've stepped away from it for a while, I can add extra little things or add more color or even go back and layer. So it's just kind of an ongoing process as well as having the ability if you're just not really enjoying what's happening on that page mm -hmm. or just the colors aren't really working with you, go ahead and just flip the page. It's already there for you and grab some more text, look in your there box you of go. photos and you can start collaging and continue to do that. And I found that to be, to take away a lot of the anxiety that I have knowing that if I don't like what's happening on this, I have more space, I have another yeah. opportunity to, to do it again. So instead of kind of fearing a, the blank canvas, knowing that I have multiple blank canvases yeah. to work on really uh, takes away that anxiety and allows me to keep creating. I think that's a really, um, that's one of my favorite things about art journaling is it's not, it's really not intimidating the way a canvas is. With canvas you've right. got one piece to work with and if you mess it up <laughs> you have to know how to fix it. You have to know but how to fix it, this, yes. You're right, you can just flip to the next page, get some more supplies, another picture. And I and I struggle with the same thing. There's times where I have, I have favorite layouts and favorite um, pages that I've done in books and then I also have some of those that just are kind of put in amongst those other ones and uh, eventually once you finish your book that you've created it becomes even something more um, intentional and uh, all of the pieces begin to blend together and you see color themes and you just mm -hmm. you see kind of a pattern it's really nice um, on pages I love using rubber stamps I love ink and so on each page just to draw a little bit more attention to what I am trying to convey I will use my alphabet stamps here to stamp something across the page. Fill in some of that white space Yes. across the top or down the side. I've seen you do it along the bottom. And I have three different sizes of stamps small, medium, and large, mm -hmm. so that just gives me some options. 
And so sometimes here, even when you're working, your stamp pad won't evenly stamp out mm -hmm. something. So I'll go ahead and just kind of take a marker or take a little pen and I just kind of do a little dotting in here and now I've filled in and now that now I can read that as, as an H. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to kind of work around some of those what maybe would seem like an imperfection. I can yeah. kind of alter a little in. bit. So here I'm stamping out, honor your journey. Some of my favorite words. Kind of have a collection mm -hmm. of, of words that I carry, yeah. some affirmations that as, the, as I continue to create and, and move forward, I, I, they just seem to resonate with me. Well, and this is a nice way to, that long phrase, to connect the two pages together to make it one cohesive I almost, Spread. when I work in a book form, I'm always using both the left and the right mm -hmm. as a joint uh, spread. But you can work, you know, separately, but in, in all of my projects that I do, you'll see that the left and the right usually will connect yeah, together. they go together. Okay, well, if you like what you've seen and you want to learn more about Nicole's design elements and her book arts and her art journaling, um, visit createmixedmedia.com. You can find out more about her book there or northlightshop.com. You can also visit Nicole's website, which is... Nicole, which is N-I-C-H-O-L-E, yeah. Ray, R-A-E, design.com. All right, and you can find the book in the spring of 2014. Thank you.